Uh oh. Way to it. go! Way to go, Rob! Way to go! We knew we were making a mistake when we invited him. I know, uh, right? And... Welcome to TFLP Microcasters. We're live September first. Uh, I'm Lucas. I'm here with Christian. Hello. And Anna. Hi. And Rob. <laughs> Hi, everybody. What's up, bro? So we, we have another show here with uh, Rob because uh, we needed to find someone else with the figure uh, because I, as much as I've, you know, tried to get myself to buy this, I've not been able to. So hope, let's see whether or not these guys can convince me to spend my hard-earned dollars on, on this figure here tonight. So... Uh, but the figure we're doing is Mastermind Creations third party uh, IDW um, Helix, which is they call Moors, I guess. Correct. Yep. So. Does everybody boy. pronounce his name Helix instead of Helix, even though it's spelled exactly like Helix? I say it's Helix. not. It's H E L E X. Is it? Oh, okay. I spelled it wrong. I fixed it. I just it. Say it wrong, today. Oh. I fixed it. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> so so yeah, like um I yeah, like anyway. Um yeah, MMC Moore's here. Uh so I don't know what what do you guys think? I guess it's been a long time coming with the DJD from MMC. So I think they released their very first uh Voss, I guess. Yes. How many years ago? Like five, seven, seven. Was it seven? I thought it was twenty fifteen. It was twenty thirteen. Jeez. I remember where I was when I ordered it, and I, when I was a drug rep, I didn't have that thing after twenty thirteen. I didn't have that account after twenty thirteen. So. Yeah. So is Voss that was the first, not Tarn? Voss. Oh yeah, Tarn was way later. Oh yeah. Oh okay. Tarn was like twenty sixteen. Yeah, the. uh... I can't remember his name. Begins with an A, I think. The uh, Anarchist is K on. Yeah, he was second. Came out swinging with an electrocution chair. Yeah. Yes. So Catherine in the chat mentioned that she has the rest of the DJD, but needs convincing on this guy. And I'm kind of the same way. Where um, I guess we'll go through it, but like I feel like the big guys didn't really get as much page time as like some of the smaller ones. And so it's like, do you really want to spend uh, what is one hundred and eighty dollars on a figure? I mean, it, it, I guess it completes the group, so there's that. But man, like between this and and um, uh, what is it? What's the other one? Tortor uh, or Tesserus. Yeah, um, it's it, it's tough to spend. You know what, three hundred and sixty dollars or whatever it is on two figures that were kind of background characters. But what I do mean, you guys think? For me, it was in. I had there was no hesitation. I've been looking forward to completing the set since the beginning, and I kind of the price. I think is part of what it is. You know, obviously, all the prices for everything is up right now. But even that stuff aside, I think I don't think they really planned on reusing these a lot and repainting them a bunch. And so I, they had to front load a lot of their engineering costs on these. Um, which then makes there be less sales, which means they need to front load the cost a little more, it, you know. And so I think it was a bit of a self feeding cycle that ended up at the price it is. It's, yeah, it's, it's definitely canon. well, no, I mean, Boston didn't he... even get repaints, right? Uh, Boston, Voss got some reissues at least, too. Okay. Um, I don't, Keon, I think Kaon got a reissue too, but I could be wrong. It feels like he did. It. They've reissued them like every time a new figure comes out. So mm-hmm. it's Let's it's one of those things out. where I feel Boss like they've sold pretty well version. overall. Well, I mean, obviously the DJD is like a very popular, you know, right. subgroup of a, you know, semi niche fandom or continuity or like people that hardcore collectors, you know, love it or whatever. But you know, somebody that isn't already in, pretty into the fandom buying comic books isn't going to know what the hell the DJD is. You know, they've so far, they haven't branched out into other media. Maybe they will, you know, in the future. But, um, but I, I, do, I, I do think at least that 
Um, these are the only guys in town making this figure. Like, other than if you want to get the Legends figures, like Iron Factory released the set. But if yeah. you want them to go with a masterpiece or, you know. Um, they're they're solidly Chuck style yeah. and scale. Like, right, they are not. Right, right, right. right. Well, not masterpiece. What I'm saying is, if you want to go with a regular collection, you're going to get these over the Iron Factory ones. They're just kind of small, so yeah. Um, and like for a comparison, uh, this will be a spoiler for Out My Wallet tomorrow. You know, unintentional plug, but like here he is with masterpiece Starscream, and you can see that they're about the same height. Starscream was 150 through Target, and you know, 150 for this and 180 for this for third party. That's not that big a price difference. You know, neither one, or rather, this one has MMC has no die cast. Starscream has very little. Um, he does have some. He's got a little in his feet and his shoulder thingies are are. Um, but you know, usually die cast is more expensive, and that translates to the price. But it's expensive. There's there's no ifs ands or buts about it. But just for the size of the figure, it is. I don't right. think it's unreasonable, but you pick it up and you notice it's all plastic, you, you know, like there's, it just is. Um, I like that though, but I'm not a fan of die cast in general. I like it when it's used correctly. And I also loved vinyl tech, which was all, you know, had die cast all over the place, but, um, but he's got lots of, uh, paint apps as well. I mean, he's molded in solid plastic. But, you know, there's just lots of, like, you know, pinks and little silvers and little accent parts just kind of, you know, spread throughout or whatever. You know, a nice amount, but nothing excessive, nothing crazy. I really like that pink they use on their figures. It's on, um, it's on Tarn, too. And it's just, that's a really nice pink, the way it pulls out details. And you it need just to think, the shelf, looks good with lighting. You need to thank the colorist for IDW Comics. Because <laughs> they... He would use that hot pink to pop when he wanted it to. Was it, I think Prez colored a lot of them, maybe? Am I completely off base? I think it was Prez, yeah. Um, you know, I don't know who came up with the initial color schemes or whatever, but yeah. You know, they were helped it you know, pop on the page, and it just looks so great on the toy itself as well. And all that clacking you've been hearing has been Christian transforming it to car mode since mine was a <laughs> robot. I did it. Car thing. <laughs> But it, uh, it took me a little bit because I haven't done it in about a month and a half, so I, I had forgotten. But it is actually fairly easy, uh, which is something I liked. I had to get the the back, the, the legs in the tread mode, and it's all fine now. But this is like an actual vehicle mode. I mean, it looks like a garbage truck, and it's supposed to be a portable smelting pool, but it actually does resemble the model. It does the thing, and it's rather nice at it. Well, Rob mentioned that when you grab this, it feels like a solid chunk of plastic. And it really does. It's like it's heavy. Like as soon as I pulled out, put it out of the box, it's like, wow, this is dense. I like it. I don't think it doesn't feel that dense to me. I mean, it doesn't. It's not like I'm not going to throw it across the room. But it's not like uh, when I picked up MMC's um, Skylinks. Like oh, God. that that thing I can brain somebody with, and that's just one half of it, much less both halves together. Um, the lower half. Yeah, because that has all a ton of die cast in it, though. All die cast. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, this isn't like thin knockoff plastic. It's it's MMC quality. If you've bought yeah, MMC chug figures, this is 100% in line with that. You know, of the transformation is all big, chunky movements, which, you know, like, if you look at something like Tarn, I was surprised at how great Tarn looks in both modes, and it's such a simple transformation. Mm -hmm. You know, they're... And, I don't know, that figure every now and again, I'll still pop it down. I'll be like, oh, man, how does this work so smoothly and look so good? Like, I feel like there should be a bunch of annoying panels right. to fold or something. Tarn is and, a really impressive figure. It yeah. really stands out. So would you say that this one is anywhere near Tarn's level? Or is this just, like, a, a good buddy for Tarn, but it's not like that? It's not going to blow I, your mind like Tarn did? I would say it's pretty close to Tarn's level. What... Helix does really well is turn a brick into something that does have that elegance of movement. Yeah. And several of us on the show collect rock lords, so we do like it when <laughs> I like bricks that. or balls turn into things. Um, I, for me, it's not as impressive as Tarn. Like, Tarn was just kind of one of those <laughs> mind-blowing things. But this is really well done. 
you know, if you're a fan of the DJD, you're a fan of the character, um, you know, the price isn't out of line for a third party. It feels like it is, but it's it's a big figure. My arm really gets tired of holding it. Yeah, <laughs> I'll switch for, for a bit. What, um, what's the articulation like on them? I was going to get to that in just a second. Um, but the transformation, you know, lots of times bigger guys are not fun to transform their chores. I don't think he's that way. It follows that MMC line of if it moves, you need to move it for transformation. But there is a lot of articulation built in. So, you know, his head's on a ball peg or whatever, but like his shoulder goes way up. So, you, and this part spins around. Um, so you can do like, I had him kind of scratching his head for a while, you know, <laughs> like he's just kind of, you know, chilling back there just for fun, just sitting on my desk like that. And he's got the swivel. He has a really cool elbow joint. Um, this is simple. Because it's big pieces, it's easy to do movement like this. Um, so it's a double jointed, and the sculpt breaks up a little bit, but not completely. Especially if you don't go all the way, kind of you know connects. Um, his well, fingers are really nicely articulated. He's got his uh, Ninja Turtle hand with all the little knuckles on it. And because one thing again, I'll say with some of the big figures is, is some of them can like have a tendency to get in the way of themselves, like. The uh, Roadbuster is like that, like MMC's Roadbuster, like that backpack and whatnot, like it's really hard to articulate yeah. him because like the big pieces kind of get in the way. So as I was kind of curious with this, if like yeah. anything actually got in the way of his articulation. I mean, that's what you get without changing the position of the backpack. Actually, kind of, the good. backpack, if you just lean it back a little, and I'll pop the guns off, the guns are getting in the way, but they can go at a lower position or at a higher position and they rotate around, so you can point them. You can point them out of the way if you want, but I had them like positioned like hip guns. But his backpack also disconnects, and sorry, there's a spot here. But then this can also position up higher, can which you, gets you. Can you move the figure over a little bit, kind of like in front of you more? Sorry. Yeah, there you go. Sorry, it's like off camera. Sorry. So if you position the backpack up in the higher spot, you get more out of there. And then if you just unpeg it just slightly, then you can go all the way around if you need that for some reason. Um, he has an ab crunch as well. Um, and then again, when, as soon as you articulate the ab crunch, the wrist is complete or the waist is completely free. But even then, even at the lower position, you get plenty of waist movement. Um, you know, hips up, hips all the way out. They're not ratcheted, but they are very nicely tensioned. How will that be in 10 years? I don't know. Will I be alive in 10 years? I don't know. Um, you know, knee moves all the way back. The only thing I think, it doesn't have an ankle rocker. Or if it does, yeah, it's got just a very slight one. That's probably the only miss, not that you really need it. Um, he's got plenty of toe down and crap like that, though. And the knee's double-jointed because he's kind of, he's not as chicken leg to say Starscream, movie Starscream is, but you can chicken leg him a little bit. And some of that's for transformation. Um, I mean, you know, that's the basics of it. Oh, and then his his little uh, uh, Quaid arms from Total Recall. Uh, you know, they do stuff. Those, not fingers aren't articulating anything, but he's got little hands and grabbers, and those got some joints on them too. So for a big dude, I find him very um, articulated, and you can get lots of expression out of him, you know, <laughs> just because, you know, the big chunky arms and the double elbow helps a whole lot with that. And then, you know, the rest of it's kind of, Standardish, but you can get so much, and and that ab crunch is really nice too. It's it's a simple ab crunch, but it's just it's all tensioned really really well to hold where they you want them to because there's not ratchets in it. And that seems really standard for the set, just from what I've seen of the. I have <coughs> the first three of them, and they're just they're all like that, right? They all have really good arm articulation with the shoulders and everything, and then there's. It's not easy to complain about something with these figures. Yeah. I mean, it's... On the one hand, I feel it's what you expect. But MMC has set, I think, a pretty high bar for the so that when they have a figure that kind of doesn't meet that bar, it really stands out. Um, and I think he, he definitely passes that bar. Yeah, you know, it's, it's funny. Like, prior to uh, Transformers Siege, I was like... Um, <laughs> Like, why can't Hasbro do, like, this kind of thing? Like, why can't wh why can't they make really good, like, chug figures? And, like, because that's what MMC does, is they're really fun, they're fun to transform, 
There's you don't have to worry about the paint scraping, whatever. Like you can just play with them, pose them, all that kind of thing. But they still look good and accurate and, and whatever. Um, and so Hasbro kind of finally has been doing that with with Siege and Earthrise. Um, I mean, it's not it's still not at the same level. I mean, obviously these are, you know. Hundred dollar, two hundred dollar figures, whatever. But it's uh, you, you can definitely tell like where they, you know, better quality plastic, better quality paint, and you know all that type of thing. So don't have a bunch of gaps and things like that. Yeah, you know, there's no hollowness. There's not like big hollow legs or anything like that that we see in a lot of Hasbro figures. Um, you know, and again, plastic's nice and thick. I don't have any of the recent Siege stuff, so like. What's he sized about? Is he like um, Skylink size, Christian, would you say? Something around there? Uh, maybe a little smaller. A little bit smaller, but probably just as much plastic. Okay. And that was, what, an $80 figure? Yeah. So, on the one hand, you get that, but then you get, like, Masterpiece Starscream, where this is... I feel closer to Masterpiece Starscream level of design and paint. Except the transformation's more fun you know um for movie star scream again for people confused um you know so it's kind of it's a different price when it's not the chug you know if this came out in chug or sorry in siege or the war for cybertron trilogy i would expect it to be around the 80 dollar price point um mm -hmm. you know just because of its size in general but it would probably would have you know hollow parts and a lot of extra weird gribbly molded detail all over the place that is not accurate but you know those things aside that's probably where i would place it but um it probably wouldn't have as much articulation though either i don't know it's it's hard to compare but so i'm going to stop you guys for a second with that just because i've been really curious about this <clears throat> the whole time i've been kind of in the more like you know high-end collecting area this distinction people make that MMC's reformatted line is like high quality chug and not masterpiece. However, could you be any more accurate to the comic models? Like they just, they really feel like they're that level of accuracy we'd expect from a masterpiece figure. So I'm really curious why everyone always draws this line. Like, well, this isn't a masterpiece like figure. This is a chug like figure. Because I really feel like when I have the figures, they don't look good with my chug toys. Like, if I put them with Siege toys, they make the Siege toys look weird. They make the so, Siege toys look soulless. Like, I think it... I'm, I think I'm the only person on the cast that's like... Hello? What the heck? That was I don't know what the heck happened. Hello? I'm, I'm here. Here too. You dropped. You, uh, well, now your your video is not going, and I don't know what's going on. I don't know what happened. No, I can see her. Oh, now, now you got it. I'm okay. watching the stream. Last video wasn't going for me. Everybody dropped off. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what we're happened. Back. But we're back. I don't know. Um, we were back. All right, Rob, you were talking yeah. about how unique you were. Please continue. <laughs> I, no, I think I'm the only one on the cast that still, like, loves Masterpiece. Like, I know Paul buys it, and Peter buys it. Um, you know, Nick very reluctantly buys it. Um, but... You know, I'm still all in on that. So as somebody that is like still loves the masterpiece line, like the big differences are, especially with today's definition of the line, they're not heavily painted. That's that's one big thing. They don't have a lot of accessories, which is another big part of it. Um, but really, even just looking at the figure itself, a lot of it's in the hardware. Um, so masterpiece figures generally will have more ratchets, more things of that nature and these guys don't have that, and that's what tends to slide them toward that scale. Um, you know, it's, I don't know. As a design philosophy, you know, if, if we say that Masterpiece's goal is to be as accurate to the source material as possible, then Anna definitely has a point. I mean, that's one of many things, though, is accuracy to the source material. But that is not the only thing that defines what a Masterpiece toy is these days. I think me, that's I mean, one reason I've walked away from it a little bit is just because, to me, that is what defines a Masterpiece toy. Like, I actually kind of like these reformatted toys better as toys because they manage to be accurate, but they don't turn into convoluted, annoying messes. And I think yes. they look just as good to me. Well, I know I mean, people might see a difference, but I really don't. 
the the thing the thing for me like for masterpiece one i think there's a lot more paint on it than uh than on mmc and so like whether you like that or not i mean paint looks nice um you know if you're not going to mess with your figure that much um you know it just has a tendency to chip or scratch or whatever um and i i think that the the thing that I like about MMC figures are is that they're really heavy duty. Like, and it, I feel like some of the older masterpieces figures were more like this, where I didn't really have to worry about breaking them. Um, yep. Whereas I do, man, like that hound, like in the Jakar's new factory has been problematic. <laughs> like I don't know. I feel like even like with uh, Sunstreaker, it wasn't that bad. But like I didn't have any issues with breaking it. I know I think Maz might have, but um, like I just like I know when Anna brought her figures over to uh, to me to check out like Bumblebee and Hound both, I didn't actually get all the way through the transformation because I'm like this isn't my figure. I don't want to break it. Like, and I'm like, here you go. Here's it back. Like, and I knew, you know, obviously hounded had some breakages. Um, and so I was like, I, I just don't even want to mess with that part. Um, but yeah, I think that that's the thing with MMC is, is I almost feel like that that's kind of like the MMC figures are what I wish Hasbro was, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, like I almost wish that there was a way that Hasbro could do figures like, at the fifty dollar price level or something like that for a similar level instead of a hundred, like or like this figure, like you said, that it would be eighty or a hundred dollars instead of instead of one eighty. I mean, I think like again, it's... MMC is making smaller runs of these figures than what Hasbro would make, so they can't stretch out like that tooling cost and all that kind of thing yeah. across the line. Like it's pretty impressive what they can pack in for the price level. So you guys have mentioned paint a couple of times for masterpiece thing. This isn't missing any paint to me. Like I'm not hurting for any paint apps. No, Sorry. masterpiece toys are today's that are fully painted though. And I that is it. It's it's not I missing anything. Like that, but uh, it's a, it's a personal. That's why I don't collect masterpiece anymore. I don't yeah. like the complex puzzles. I don't like all the paint shipping. I, I I'm not. This is a this is a. This feels like Masterpiece 2 to me. You know, the side swipes, the blue streaks, the MP10s of the world. You know, and it's fine to not like that. So that wasn't that the question. Anna, this is... The question was, oh. why isn't this considered Masterpiece? And it's because Masterpiece Maybe figures I will. are painted all the way through. But you can put it wherever you want. And, you know, and you should. If you think yeah, you want an it, IDW Masterpiece show, and you want to uh, put MMC on it, go it. above the traditional generation's weight. So yeah, it, it boxes above that aesthetic. Yeah. I, I think between. the I think the other thing too is is that the um, generations figures from Hasbro are uh, do are a lot more stylized in general, and so I think that you know the IDW comic and whatnot kind of carried that over, and so like these because they're accurate to the source model are you know are, are more stylized and so i think that that's where they kind of get lumped in with you know with that kind of thing because it it used to be however many years ago when fans project was kind of like king of third party that you know that they were doing that third party chug thing to go along with your generation's collection and whatnot like it's only been a relatively recent trend where we're actually getting hyper accurate you know figures in general so it's even MMC, like their older figure, uh, reformatted figures were not accurate to the comic. They were like kind of a, a mix of accuracy and like their own touch on it. Depends on the figure, but yeah, like the DJD has always been accurate because again, there was also only one source for it. You know, they didn't have anything else to go off of. Um, but I mean, I would note MMC has, because they're nicer than the mainline Hasbro stuff, but they're missing a few key things for to meet the modern definitions of masterpiece. So that, but they don't do a lot of G one. But their Ocular Max stuff, a lot of people do put that in their masterpiece stuff. And some of the Ocular Max stuff does meet the, that criteria. But then like their uh, Bruticus set follows a lot of that, where it has like all the G one cartoon cues, but because it's again like very light on the paint. 
some people don't want to put it in their masterpiece collection. But it's obviously way up from you know Combiner Wars, <laughs> you know. So it's like right. it's right. it's hard to feel. like I'm I've putting them in my masterpiece stuff. Do they fully fit masterpiece? No, not not in my book. But is it good enough? And is it to me the best representation out there right now? Yeah. So I put it on my masterpiece shelf. Well, I think sometimes no too, like MMC tries to split the difference on some of this stuff, where they're like, "All right, if you're collecting reformatted, like this stuff kind of fits, and if you're collecting masterpiece, this kind of this stuff kind of fits." So yeah, um, yeah, I think that's probably part of it. It all comes down to what you like on yourself, right? If you yeah. think these guys look right standing by your masterpiece figures, like I do. You know, I have these guys with my masterpiece figures, and I also have the Fans Project Headmasters with my masterpiece figures. People tell me those are chug figures, too. They're not to me. I think it's really just kind of like, you know, if you feel like articulation and accuracy and lack of, you know, kibble and whatnot is really what makes something masterpiece, this is probably going to be your masterpiece, Helix. I would say that, do we? Do I think we'll ever get a better Helix? No. No. Do, we, do I think we'll ever get any other versions of the DJD at all, other than you know the the ones we got in Legends from Iron Factory? No. Why not? <laughs> yeah. Very unlikely. I mean, there's not much more you could ask for for this, unless you wanted something that was you know the Takara definition of masterpiece, which is painted top to bottom and probably would be you know more fragile and more problematic to transform. I also think MMC has just excellent engineers. They're so good. And I know some of those engineers, uh, most of them are contractors. They contract with the third-party companies to go off and design something. You know, they make it to spec. And Takara does the same. They hire engineers, and some of those guys work on third-party and have worked at Takara. And they know they know each other, you know. I don't know what's going on with Skype here. I'm on a little trip again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but the engineering is just... They managed to get really accurate in both modes while being fun to transform. And yeah, is this guy, does he take more to transform than Tarn? Yes. But is it like a headache? No. He's also like three times as large as Tarn. <laughs> is there any he, way that you could, um, like, do you happen to have Tarn or some of the other DJD yeah. that you could, like, pose uh, do you want with me to grab? this guy by any chance? Tarn. All right, be right back. Christian's doing I, too. I'm just curious, like, too. if I wanted this to say this, but, and then also, Christian, how, how well does this guy uh, fit into a detolf? I realize you have him in robot mode, or in vehicle mode now, but like, how how he fits. how does it look in a detolf? So really great. Can you actually? Do you think it will be able to put all the DJD into one detolf cube, or is it going to have to be? Yes, like, it'll be tight. It'll be tight if you want to include nickel and the pet, but the main five you could do just fine. Real tight. So here he is with Tarn. I try to give a little side by side. So you can see, I mean, he's a couple heads taller, but obviously just way more massive. And are you just trying to make my shoulders tired? Jesus. <laughs> yep, that's right. <laughs> so pretty much. There, there is one thing I want to say about the, the price. I mean, there's no getting around it. This thing is $180. That's a lot of money to put on one figure, especially you know. For me, you guys may or may not know that I have, you know, a no figures over one hundred dollars rule generally now. You know, you could get two liters or a bunch of, you know, three liters for uh, Earth Rise. You get a bunch of other like official figures for the price that you're going to put into this one. You could get a Scorpionock for almost the same price, but if you do decide to spend the money on this one, you're not going to regret it. It's a it's a hard pill to swallow, but it, it's a beneficial pill to swallow. It's. I would take this over three Sleepy Primes any day. I'd take it over six Sleepy Primes. <laughs> you know, this yeah. is a... Yeah, no, if, there, but, there's a little bit where I'm sitting there thinking about... Like the you know Sleep Mode Prime, the Ultra Netflix Ultra Magnus, and the um, uh, you the Galactic name the Man for this. You know, like some of those. I, I don't know. If I, I could probably come up with like a pretty good chunk of stuff that I've probably got that I was like, I I I trade that in for this if you know if we're doing a straight up trade. I mean, I think. Oh the, yeah, that. The. 
the motivation to buy this is if you love the DJG in the comics and the, you know, you both want to support like, you know, again, the weird niche characters that, as you said, he didn't have a lot of characterizations. Neither of the big guys did. They were just big hulking brutes that were terrifying. It, you know, that's, um, but they were also kind of background characters that just did, you know, gruesome things. Um, <laughs> but you know, if you're into it, you want to support, you know, the deeper cuts and you want to see things like, Oh, it's a big figure. We can't make it. They don't sell. You know, part of it is, I'm going to say this. I don't mean this exactly, but in a way it's like investing in future releases in a way by just, you know, supporting, I want you to make, I want you to make the deeper cuts in IDW. You make them, I'll buy them because, you know, and some cuts I may love some of them. I won't. And I know that they're going to be sparse enough that it's not like, Oh, here's 20 garbage characters. You don't care. I know that's not going to happen. You know, and that's one of those things too where as long as they're well done, it's still really well done. Everything about it. If it was like their Cyclonus, I didn't buy that because I didn't think that was Cyclonus. That was such a miss, you know. They have misses, definitely. Yeah. I, I don't think, I mean, they definitely had a period where of, of misses. And I think that they kind of went back to the drawing board uh, dur- after that period and people complained uh, because their deadlock, which is the same as uh, Mold as the Cyclonus, the... Um, uh, the world, which is similar, it's kind of like a retooling. People complained yeah. about like they had a bunch that were kind of like in that period of several years. They ago. tried too too much to get that weird reuse, and instead of nailing one and then getting some cool repaints out of it, they just missed them all. <laughs> right. Whereas, like now, they kind of did. Uh, who who was it? It was um, who was the smaller figure that they did? There was a repack, uh, Braun and. Um, Oh, Braun and Guzzle. Guzzle. Yeah. So they made Guzzle That's pretty accurate, fantastic. but then, but then Braun, <laughs> like Braun. they they oh, forced you to buy that Braun, like because they were in a two pack and everyone complained about that. No one wants the Braun. I mean, it was what was it one sixty for the two or one twenty for the two? It was one twenty. So I mean, it's really a hundred and twenty dollar Guzzle. But That's... like. The the funny thing is when they they did that is then um, they released the um, oh uh, they've released a couple other figures as single releases that have been smaller but then they end up being like eighty bucks like the ravage yeah. is is eighty bucks where I feel like I would have almost felt better if they would have thrown that in with the pet and 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 I realize I know the pet was with um, the who was the pet with. Um, the nickel. mega, or yeah, nickel, nickel. Thank nickel, you. Nickel on the back, um, yeah. yeah. So it was with nickel. Uh, so you know, you kind of putting those together. But yeah, the like I did not feel like the Ravage was worth eighty. Like it's a really cool figure. I really enjoy it. I like it. Um, but I'm just not sure it's worth eighty dollars. So, but I. The thing that I like with the MMC is the fact that, like, I was kind of worried that now that IDW, the old More Than Meets the Eye-verse, has been done now for a couple years, that they're going to, like, just quit with the line. And so I'm happy that they're actually, like, you know, releasing this stuff. They're releasing Getaway. They're, you know, they're releasing some of the other uh, characters as well. So I'm, I'm they got happy. got new Prime coming out. Oh, man, that Prime looks fantastic. On the one hand, I'm like, cool, it's a, you know, that's from the comic, you know, it's a thing. On the other hand, I'm like, oh, it's another Optimus Prime toy. Never had one of those before. <laughs> like, there's a part of me that was just kind of, yeah. The thing that I'm excited about it is, is that I, I feel like in order for a collection to be complete, it has to have an Optimus Prime, right? <laughs> And so my reformatted matted collection, I just felt like was never like there was a Megatron in there, you know. Uh, there's Rodimus and, and all these other guys, but like I don't have you know an Optimus Prime, and so like that's what I'm excited about that I'll finally there have are, that character. There are IDW Optimus Primes, just not from MMC. Right. And okay. Not, so not the model kit. What MMC doing. There's not what. Not from the period of the comic that MMC is doing with that figure. Yes. Yeah, correct. The other the other thing is is okay. So like they have um, 
is that Generation Toy and G Creation both release primes, but they're a little bit bigger, like they're more masterpiece scaled, um, so they don't fit. And then mm. um, the uh, Toy World Hegemon is the same size, but Toy World Hegemon is not like it's. I mean, it's an old toy. It's not that great. Like it's okay. Um, so <clears throat> I think the um, uh, what you call it, uh, Make Toys. Um, uh, figure that came out, uh, Striker Manus, it, it fits in kind of, but again, like it's its own if thing. It's not really IDW. Hard. It's not IDW accurate though. So, uh, yeah, the Flame Toys kit for my Megatron is is great. I had Tyrantron from MMC for a while just because I wanted that Megatron. The model kit ended up being better for me. It's it's cheaper. It's more accurate. It doesn't have a cumbersome alt mode because it doesn't have an alt mode at all. Because model kit, it looks nice and I like it. They're, right. they're going to do a hot run or a Rodimus from uh, More Than Meets the Eye as well. Will they do an Optimus from More Than Meets the Eye? We'll see. Probably not. Well, I mean, they I, did. Definitely... I mean, that the one that they did it appeared in uh, More Than Meets the Eye later on. Okay. It's in season two or whatever. Like it's not not a lot not a lot of time to spend. It's not as much time as like what that yeah. the one that MC is releasing. But yeah, nevertheless, from the, high. the oh, other thing that's really cool about that Optimus Prime it's though is is um, that the Optimus Prime is really well articulated. Like has a ton of articulation, but it's only a hundred and nine dollars. And I realize I say only, but like comparative. If you want a good Optimus Prime, it's going to be more Actually, it's only $103.07 with free shipping from Planet Still Express. Mm. Perfect. The exchange rate. <laughs> Thank you for $6 the is going to make the difference. Um, yeah, I've been thinking um, I was going to... They've announced that they're going to do all, all the recolors of that Prime, and I've kind of been thinking I will wait on one of those, but I don't know. I may have to jump on the Optimus version. I just I have no like connection to any of the recolors, so like for me it makes no sense to do. Like I'm sure there's plenty well, of other people that I'll love getting a Nemesis well, Prime or whatever. But... I think. Um... Oh, did we cut off again? No. What? No. no. We were just wow. talking at the same time. Everyone stopped talking. Yeah, we're just um, talking over each other. I think something that we should point out is that if you collected MMC like way back in the day. You know, way back when these figures came out, when the different various 15 old comic style, quote unquote, RCs came out and reformatted, they've come a super long way since then. Like this oh, yeah. figure, I really thought looks cool. And then I saw the whole, you know, we recently got the announcement that we're going to get a selects or whatever, two pack selects, whatever, paradromatic. And I finally thought maybe I'll get rid of my Zinnia because Amazon exclusive. Say her name. Huh? Her name is Lifeline. Her name was it Lifeline at one point or another. It is now. It has been for like five years. Yeah, my first ever occurrence was those little Heroes of Cybertron figures where she was a paradigm medic and that was it. Remember those? She bought them at like Walgreens. They were huge disappointments. Yes. They weren't great. <laughs> Mine came from Eckerd. Oh, perfect. Well, anyway, I want to make the point, like, if you bought, like, this and Hexatron, you know, if you bought this old RC and everybody else mold, or if you bought Hexatron, this they've come a long way since then. Like, they've really improved the engineering, the look, and even the feel is a lot better than it used to be. And, I mean, I would note that figure, I think, is one of the worst figures I own, if not the worst figure I still own in my collection. I have... That mold, I have her in the um, like the pink and light blue colors with like the silver weapons with the oh, hammer. Those are those look fantastic. So, Solus Prime. Yeah, Solus Prime, which is, you know, it's a, I don't know, it's a really cool release given you know just the weirdness of it, the oddity of it, and the color scheme looks great. That is the worst thing I've ever tried to transform. I'll never mess with that toy again. Yeah. Nope. But it's so cool looking in robot mode. I'm fine to just leave it be. But like, it, it's it's so terrible that it stands out from almost everything else MMC's done, and they've done nothing but get better. But it's still it's just so bad. Even at the time it came, I was like, "What the hell is this?" Um, yeah. 
I have Feral Queen because she looks cool perching on Feral Rex's shoulder, but I will never transform that thing no. again. I and transformed this a couple times. Fall. I was not, not happy. Good. No. Well, um, not I will say if most you... of the third parties in general, like the smaller figures, like just aren't as great. Like I feel like the bigger figure, like the bigger the figure is, the better that third party does. Like fans toys is that way, and MMC I feel like is that way too. The little figures yeah. they get, they all get really fiddly, and they start hurting your fingers. <laughs> Trying to mess with you know, it. Um, you know who's ironically really like that? Iron Factory. Iron Factory's larger figures are so much more impressive than their smaller figures, even though they make legends. So you know they're <laughs> known for small things. Their their figures that get up around this size are just really, really, really impressive. The smaller ones are like, eh, they're okay. <laughs> I think I agree. Um, so to circle back to this guy here, Luke. Oh, no, you go ahead. Okay. Um, you know, the, I think the main reason to buy this guy is if you love IDW and you love DJD, and as Christian Christian said it best earlier, like. If you spend the money on it, you're not going to be unhappy, you know, because it it checks all the boxes, it hits all the marks. It's a fantastic toy. Um, it's just it's pricey. Um, I think the IDW stuff though is winding down to a degree for MMC. The word on the street is that their Chrome Dome uh, two pack isn't selling super great. I, I don't know what that means. Like, is it like, oh man, it's you know, we only sold five, you know, like. Does that mean they only hit 50% of their numbers? They only hit 20% or they only hit 80%? You know, I don't know what that means, but it wasn't selling as much as they like. Um, so if you're into IDW, you should probably get it while you can. MMC makes stuff to order, basically. They you know they don't get a right. bunch of leftover. They do not sit on stock. When the MMC stuff is sold, it's gone. Um, so if you do want it, you need to get it. And the last one, Tortor, is 200 bucks. It's 20 bucks more. And whereas, mm -hmm. you know, Tarn's here and Moore's is here and he's like a couple heads taller, Tortor's a couple heads taller again. He is even taller and wider. Like, it's, I can't imagine, I'll have to hold him up like a quarter of the time I'm holding this one up. <laughs> you know, I have to Yeah, he is so freaking huge. Um, he's but you know due it, next month ish. Uh, it says okay. September first. It says expected release date is September first. Yeah, so just well, add like a month or so to... on it. Yeah. And for what's that's almost every Lucas, company ever. Were we able to convince you? Man, I don't know. I'm. I kind of want it now, but oh, I was gonna say, uh, Catherine, that feral queen. She said she wanted the feral queen. It is, like, really, really hard to get those MMC figures, like, after the fact. Like, like um... Made to order. You gotta get them. Um, what, what was the one? There was a couple of, um... That... The Beast Machines, um, what's her name? Stryka. Oh, yeah, Titanica. Like, it was such a beautiful figure when it came out, and I didn't get it. And then, like, now it's like, oh, man, like, I kind of... I, I wish I could get that. And then, um... I want also, that so bad. What was the, um... There was another one... Um, it was like black. Is hard to get now. What's that? Comatus. Turmoil is hard to get now. Yes. Comatus. That's that's the other one. It's like it's it's really hard. It's like one of those things. Even if like unless you wanted to spend crazy amounts of money, like they'll have like someone on eBay will have it for like a crazy amount of money, and then it'll never sell. And then other Wait. than that, it's just. I was, was able to. to I was able to split my room with an MMC rep at. Uh, TFCon one time and got Feral Queen in exchange for that. Oh, nice. <laughs> I mean, even their crappy figures like Cyclonus still sells for like 200 in the box. Cyclonus you know? is $200 in the box? Holy shit, I need to sell this tomorrow. <laughs> like, Lucy goes for a lot less. Um, I mean, like, you know, it's, it's hard to tell. There's The point is, there's only like five or six sold listings to even look at. Right. You know, nice. and so if. I don't know. I think if you like the DJD and you want and you like big awesome figures representing you know some of your favorite fiction, it's a no brainer. Um, but I'll tell you like if you decide in six months, man, I really want to finish the DJD. That sounds fun. 
you're going to be screwed. You are not going to be able to. You are not going to be able to find this for 180. dollars You're going to be like, I was so dumb, not bang buying that for 180 dollars when I had the chance. Right. But if you're like, you know what, I don't want to spend that much money on toys. I'm just not interested in it at 180 dollars. It, that's, that's okay. fine. Yeah, but my, do not change your mind. Part part of my issue too <laughs> is is that I ended up getting rid of my DJD except for, um, uh, except for Tarn. Like that was the only one that I kept, and so like that's where I'm kind of like if I'm in for this, then I'm probably gonna get the rest of them. So I was trying to strike a deal with Anna to try to get this off of her. Uh, you know, or try, trying to wheel a deal. Beans. You know, I, think I talked myself out of wanting them. So. Well, I've got new calculation keys coming. Don't you worry. <laughs> but there it's, you go. Well, I mean, it just sounds like you're not a true fan anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and gatekeep you out of the fandom. Perfect. So. Perfect. <laughs> I think I've decided to go to the small ones for the DJD. I like the concept. I like the concept of like really ruthless, dark Decepticon characters that wouldn't make it into a mainstream cartoon. I like the One, idea. I just don't have any attachment to the comics. Tarn rips off his face. Another guy shoves them in his chest. Another one turns into a freaking electrocution chair. So, I mean, it's, they're all so over the top. It's oh, that's so ridiculous. one thing I wanted to say is that, like, you guys are talking about the whole, like, you know, the price just goes up and up and up. But Can and Boss really haven't, probably because they're they've not been, really They've been them. reissued. And they've been reissued, yeah. That's, that's why. They, they actually did uh, go up in what? price. Did they? Okay. Because I got them yeah. cheap a few years ago, but... Did you just put I something in your detolf, Christian? I was trying to close the door behind me. Cause I oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, I just saw it going the other way. I was like, does Roxy have opposable thumbs? <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was closing it. Okay. My sister's cats have opposable thumbs. Perfect. Creepy. Very accomplished. But yeah, DJD's yeah. almost done. They're doing that prime... I don't know. I hope the numbers for Chrome okay. Dome pick up Chrome enough. Yeah. I'm excited I mean, for that Chrome Dome. I ordered one. Like, I, I, like, Rewind and Chrome Dome, I, I, love, I love those figures. So I'd rather get just Chrome Dome without Rewind, but okay. What? I ordered yeah. this. How could you have Chrome Dome and no Rewind? Rewind is very good. The mm-hmm. Rewind, I don't, I don't like the way it looks particularly, but I think this is the it's first right. time they've ever sold Transformers as a couple before. So I, I'm just excited about that. Like I'm always hoping for that tap out glyph kit set. That Waiting I'm for that up until it happens, so I get it from the Valentine's Day issue. But until then, that's like the only time two Transformers have been sold as a couple. So I'm all for it. Robot love is great. Yeah, I mean, I won't, I won't disagree with that. I don't think aesthetics wise, Chrome Dome and especially Rewind are like the best sculpted figures they've ever had. But I don't. They're still quite in line with what they look like in the show uh, right. or in the comic a lot. And I'm, I'm, I'm stoked to get them and I wouldn't have them any other way than as a pair. So the, the Chrome Dome model so in the first place, the design just, yeah, he's a it spindly boy. It doesn't lend itself well to toys. Yeah. Like, honestly, like it's interesting to look at in a I comic think, book, but as a toy, it's kind of, a dip, it's, it's a stretch. Fantastic. I don't know if I, I don't know if I've I just won't run like, I'll continue to buy, like, I'm getting getaway, you know, and I'll continue to buy the stuff they make. But Have I shown this off? I don't know if you showed it on dope. the show. This is it's from issue um, 16 of More Than Meets the Eye, page 21, like when uh, Rewind dies. Yeah. Spoilers. Oh. Whatever. It gets better. It does. <laughs> I Seriously do want, enough. you're right about that, Rob. Also, I really want a Riptide. Like, really badly do I want Riptide. I remember the name. I don't remember the character. Like, I remember that... He's a boat. There aren't any boats. Look at me. Exactly. (laughs) I, in fact, have a transforming boat in front of me right now, which is a rare thing in my life to have a transforming boat. Yeah, it's... I'll, I'll continue to buy the ID stuff IDW stuff they'll put out in the hopes that we'll get to a rung. Or maybe if they did a rung, it'd be enough on its own. You know, we know yeah. what his alt mode is finally. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so See, I I was concerned about that myself, and so I commissioned a rung from uh from Sean. 
off of the best figure ever made. Yes, 100%. And by best, you mean trash figure. But you saved it. I, you turned trash into treasure. <laughs> that's right. Now <laughs> now I need to, uh, uh, to have him use like the chromium mold instead. Flicker. That would be cool. Who? Look, man, if you don't know who Clicker is, you're not a true fan. So I'm going to no, go ahead and gatekeep you. you out of this. <laughs> hey, that's my line. Don't take my line. Wow, are we taking turns gatekeeping each other? <laughs> And I, I, I had no idea who Clicker was. Right. Oh, man, he was in a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Gatekeep you guys because you don't know who my boat is. Oh, no, we're gatekeeped out of knockoff garbage. Oh, no. <laughs> Not a knockoff. What is this a knockoff of? Nothing. Real toys. Sorry, sorry garbage. <laughs> just we'll, garbage. We'll just, we'll, we'll just cut off the knockoff. So you guys, we have a request to cover the boat next week on the show. Perfect. We will cover the boat. <laughs> Who requested that? Das Boat. Uh, no, I don't believe you. That... Oh. No, we're not covering the boat. <laughs> Catherine, my memory is old. I'm an old man with a really terrible brain. I do not remember things worth a crap. Like, I'll read the comics and love them and enjoy them, but I'll forget everything that happened. Actually, I want to reread those. I might reread more I'm than the right Lost now. Light. They're so I much better than the new comics. Reading club. I don't think I can allow myself. You're, I think eh, I don't think I can allow you to call yourself an old man on the show because that makes me an old lady because we're about the same age. Well, the thing, club. It isn't gonna so, work. No, nope. so Anna, Not old like, how it be? Could could we actually get you to finish more than meets the eye if we did a book club and we all like yes, read through it? I absolutely yeah. would. All right. Right, no, I will, I will always absorb media together with other humans. I don't until, really enjoy absorbing until media. Until YouTube kicks us offline <laughs> three times in a row. Well, well, luckily for reading comics, I, I think we'll be okay. Yeah. We can pretend we're all together reading the same comic book. We'll work out that idea. Viewers, let us know if you, if you want to see that or if we should just do it alone by ourselves. <laughs> Let's talk about the comics. I don't think we should do a live reading. Spin-off show. <laughs> I think we'll just sit there and read it like, oh, hmm. No, 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 oh, no, did no, you no. see that? Oh. We should all take different characters and read their lives. It'll be we should not. Perfect. We should, not no. we should absolutely not. <laughs> I'm going to make them awesome like Arnold. That's what they'll be. That said, if it's Rewind, that I love into, you. Uh, a I really love great friend much. of mine founded the Audio Nights Theater a couple years ago, and they were doing dramatic readings of... Uh, they did Last Stand of the Record, and they were doing More Than Meets the Eye. Very talented voice cast, very good production. So if you are looking to, looking to find that, uh, Audio Nights Theater, check them out. Oh, that's neat. Yeah, I, I think they stopped, though, didn't they? Or they did, they did finish Last Stand, but I don't think they've got too far in More Than Meets the Eye. Right, right. But no, I, it, I will agree that that was a good good thing, and those guys are nice guys. Such a fun, fun fact, idea. I auditioned for that. They didn't take me. What did you audition for? I auditioned just... to be Pyro. Okay. His head's just a simple ball joint, but it it just said, look, he can look up and down and tilt just enough to get a bunch of expression out of it. I don't know. It's just fun. I love the idea of the yeah. big, hulking, terrible brute with his, again, his Total Recall Quaid arms. Little grabby arms, like mm-hmm. yep. being also kind of a, a simpleton and just confused a, by a dude. confused by simple things. I don't know if that's in character or anything. Just it's fun More for the character way. for Tess. Okay, I mean, I am. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to reread those. Let's do it. There we go. All right. Well, um, so I guess it's a recommend from both of you guys, which I think, I mean, coming from Rob doesn't seem to mean that much just because you throw, you know, get all these masterpiece figures, whatever. But from Christian, who is not into masterpiece and third party anymore, really, or those expensive figures, the fact that you're willing to spend your hard earned money on that kind of tempts me even more. You have to like the fiction. Does, um, does he, what accessories does he come with? He comes with some extra baby hands. That's it. That's it. Other than the guns. Okay. Other than the guns. Which and the he guns can't use his guns. They're just part of his body. Yeah. But again, they have a couple of attachment points, so you can fiddle around with them a bit. But yeah. He can't like hold them and go pew pew. No. Cool. And why would he? He has, he has four hands to rip people apart with. He doesn't need guns. Yep. 
cool, cool. Perfect. Cool. What a great thing to end the show on. <laughs> Um, and uh, tomorrow night we're doing Ouch My Wallet. Well, I'm not, but Rob is. Uh, Correct. Wednesday night on YouTube. So check that out. That's going to be at 9.30 Eastern, 8.30 Central. Last night we uh, talked about all the fun exclusives that we've had so far this year. Um, so check that out on YouTube as well with the regular TFYLP show. Uh, and then if you want to continue the conversation, uh, join us on our Discord chat. Uh, the link is on our Twitter page and then also on YouTube. I, I think it's somewhere on Facebook, but we probably it's gotten buried. We could probably pin that to the top of our, probably should, uh, pin that to the top, top of the, uh, group or whatnot. Um, a good idea. It's a good discord. Yep. We talk about toys there. <laughs> it's lots of fun. And, uh, yeah, if you want to, uh, you know, if you like us and what we do, uh, consider supporting us on Patreon, patreon.com slash TFYLP, tiers from a dollar on up. So, all right, well, thank you, everyone, um, for joining us. Thank you uh, to Catherine and to uh, Randall for joining us in the chat uh, and for everyone, the, uh, all of our viewers. Uh, so, and thank you, Rob, for uh, taking the time to join us this week as well. Oh, yeah. Review more third party and masterpiece, and I'll, and you'll have to deal with me more. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> collect at your own risk. <laughs> Never again. <laughs> <laughs> Never again. Yeah. All I'm right, sticking well, to my weird stuff. There you go. Get get a ten pound box of knockoff trash. All right. <laughs> Bye. Night. <laughs>